Hello everyone and welcome to Infernal Devices, the first level of, well, hell. We're in hell right now. We're of course going to immediately check behind us because there are goodies back here as there often are. And we get introduced to a new enemy type. This terrifying thing will try and grab us and drag us over toward pits where it will drop us to our death. Thankfully with our extended sword's reach we can just stab them right out of the air. The only thing that really stands out in this extra area is a locked chest, but the locked chest is pretty much a joke. It just has five or so single coins for us. We're down to just three layers of armor, so we do need to be more careful than before, because now extra armor pickups will not give us invincibility, and that's a whole less health bar we have. We do still have our wind shield though, so that's nice. Get it, wind shield? These are fairly easy to walk past, the timing is very lenient. There is another kind of shield pickup in this world that we're probably going to get even if not on purpose. It is slightly inferior to our wind shield, but it's not so inferior that we should get upset about it or anything. This area we're in right here has a few extras that we could bother with before we go back on the main path. So of course we're going to bother with them. It also contains another new enemy type native to hell. These pigs with giant hammers. We can only hurt them normally by ducking and slashing away with our sword. None of our other attacks will work because they'll just bounce off the hammer, they hit too high. I used to have a lot of trouble with the pig enemies, but it's just a matter of taking it slowly. Hitting them once at a time and following them after your knockback scoots them. If you just try and swing frantically, they're liable to attack you before you can get back over to where they are. Before we head forward, there's one last thing we need to look at. Well, two. But one of them is way more important. It's that death sword over there. Every type of sword pickup can be dropped by enemies in this world, I believe. For example, there's the thunder power-up. And they can also drop the ice and fire power-ups. And the power-up new to this world, the death sword, can kill any enemy in a single strike, regardless of which type of strike it is. It also has the best projectile as you're about to see. In a moment. In a moment. It's just an enormous shockwave that obliterates anything it touches in front of you. Nothing can survive that. This chest unfortunately does not contain more armor, just more coins, but we're going to need as many coins as we can get in this level, because we're going to be skipping over quite a few coins in the others for the sake of not killing ourselves. It's a good thing we have so many stockpiled, we don't have to worry about saving for the rest of this world pretty much. It's a good idea to trick these platforms into triggering before you jump on them, that way you have a lot more time. It's still possible to do it without triggering them ahead of time, just makes it easier. The fire from these dragon statues hurts, as I'm sure you would have guessed, but like the cannons in the previous world, they only fire in one spot. It's usually fairly easy to run straight into them if you're not looking ahead, which is why they show you where they are very plainly in the first level. So that way it's your fault when you're not looking for them later. Past this dragon head a bit is one of the most uh, anxiety-inducing platforming elements. But first we have another secret area to go to. One with armor for us this time. We can't trigger this platform ahead of time in spite of my attempts to do so, so we just have to bite the bullet. And the bullet hurts, because I didn't jump quickly enough. This is one of the longer introduction levels to a world, but it's made way longer by the fact that I am checking out all the secrets. While I do cover most every secret area in this level, I'm only going to be checking the most interesting ones in the future levels because... If we head to a ton of areas that we don't need to, I could get myself killed over nothing. And here we can get our fourth armor slot back, but we're probably not going to have it very long. Mostly because that health bar isn't in very good shape. But hey, if it helps, it helps, right? Now we can go do the anxiety-inducing platforming elements. These brains are very bouncy. And when we jump on them, we want to stay in one spot and not twitch the control stick until we're at maximum height. 
Or at least the best height to get to where we need to go. It's very easy to fall into the trap of trying to make minor adjustments while, uh, while you're on those things. But if we do that, we will most certainly fall to our death. I didn't feel like dealing with that skeleton. I just didn't feel like it, so we got the shockwave. Here we'll get to see what the pig's attack actually does. If you leave it alone long enough, it hits the hammer on the ground and causes a shockwave. It's really easy to dodge unless you freak out. I mean, these enemies are really jokes, I think. They do vanish if they get far away enough from their spawn point. I'm showing you that we can also take them out with our shield, but that's not very economic of us. There's a wizard right here. And I tried to take him out with the shockwave, but it didn't go so well. So we're just going to try and hide in the center here to dodge his shots, hoping they hit this instead of us. Well, it did hit us, but at least now we're smaller. So it's easier to hide behind this thing. That wizard always gives me trouble. It's almost impossible to jump over to hit him. Before he hits you, I mean. And back over near the wizard, there is another secret area just beyond the checkpoint. I forgot that casket was there. And now we're back to three health bars. But we're still going to go check out the secret area anyway. I mistakenly said in an earlier video that there was a place where we could get an upgraded shield for free. And this was the place I was thinking of. But since I was incorrect, you're going to see me, uh grab the same shield we already have to no benefit. Also, you may have noticed that at some point, I accidentally picked up the Midas shield ability again. And I guess it's nice, but it's not really what we're looking for right now. I wanted to get this extra key before I tried to grab the shield that I thought was more valuable than it was. But if you get upset because you think I lost a key, don't worry. Because not only will that key up there mitigate the loss of this one, but there's another key over by the checkpoint we just passed that will bring us back up to a full 9, which is our maximum. So yeah, even though this is embarrassing for me, at least you got to see this extra area and we're going to uh, pick up two keys. Meaning we lost nothing. This world in particular has a whole lot of detours like this one. Oh, that was close. This world in particular has a whole lot of detours like this one. But as I said, we're not going to see all of them, because a lot of them are dangerous, and we want to preserve our health. We have just a bit more platforming before we reach the final onslaught of enemies before the end of the level. And the onslaught of enemies at the end of this level always gave me trouble. But we'll see how it goes for us. Yes, as you can see, those enemies are no problem by themselves, and I accidentally picked up the lightning shield. Well, I say accidentally, but it's a lot better than the Midas Shield. The Lightning Shield casts lightning bolts whenever we throw it, which will obliterate any skeletons in the pathway. We're going to use the Lightning Shield more than once, I'm sure. So even though it's not the Wind Shield, it's still useful. This bomb enemy is supposed to be difficult because he's supposed to throw his bombs at us while we attack the pig enemy. But if we walk away like I just did, then he'll despawn and the issue just uh, fixes itself. Now it's time for that onslaught of enemies that usually gives me trouble, but thanks to our new lightning shield, after I get rid of this guy, thanks to our new lightning shield I can eliminate the main problem, which is that fellow with the bombs on top of the platform over there. A very large number of high-quality skeletons spawn in this area to attack us all around us. And taking them out is difficult on its own. But it's a lot more difficult with a guy throwing bombs at you the whole time. And it's also difficult to get on the platform to take out the guy with the bombs. Which is why we just chucked our shield at him. And now we're pretty much done here is what I would like to say, but there's one more secret area we need to look at before we book it. You might notice that the scenery in this area looks suspiciously jaggy, and that's because we can platform on it. What do we get for platforming on it? Not, not something we're going to use. I can tell you that much. 
There's a key on the little platform right behind this big stone wall. It's very difficult to get a good angle on, but it's there. Very easy to fall into the abyss as well, and right beneath us... Right beneath us is a chest that requires a key. And we're actually going to open this one. For an extra life. Was it worth it? No. But I completely forgot what was in that particular chest and thought it might be armor. Silly me. At least we still have mostly three armor slots. Yep. Two, three. Yep. Huh. 